Hello, my friends. I'm Chris Biffle. Another wonderful Whole Brain Teaching broadcast ready for you tonight. We are broadcasting live as live can be February 28th, 2012. Our program for tonight is Teaching Challenging Kids 101. Don't you wish they had that course in college? This is lesson number four, the scoreboard. And as I will say several times, I'm Chris Biffle with WholeBrainTeaching.com. Well, now, what is Whole Brain Teaching? I'm going to tell you right now. We have over 50,000 members. In fact, I checked this morning. We're, we're getting up on 60,000 members. Over 2 million views of our videos on YouTube. 10 million pages, 10 million pages downloaded by teachers around the world. We are one of the world's most popular education websites. We love to say that. How do we get so popular? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Number one, it's free. That makes us pretty popular right there. Number two, it's fun. Free fun and fantastically effective. You see I've got those that alliteration there, free, fun, fantastically effective. That's who we are, wholebrainteaching.com. Now, where are we broadcasting from? Let me show you. We're broadcasting from Yucaipa, California. Los Angeles is a suburb of Yucaipa, California. And on the right, you see that strange graphic, lecture discussion failure. That's my teaching story right there, my friends. I was a failure for 26, 29 years because I was locked in lecture discussion. One day, I began to use some new techniques to teach Aristotle. And I used those same techniques to coach a girls' middle school basketball team and the rest is history. Same teaching techniques to teach an ancient Greek philosopher and the strategy for zone defense. I called up some of my former students. There is the picture in picture. I know that you're going to find that pretty thrilling. Here is the 3D mix. I called up some of my former students, one of whom Chris Rexted, the young, handsome fellow there in the bottom picture, taught fourth grade. And we just started going in 1999. Here we are 13 years later. Teachers in over 30 foreign countries are using whole brain teaching. It's the magic of the internet. It's the magic of fun, free, and fantastically effective. Let's talk about, you know, I kind of like this 3D mix, but let's go right to the tight shot. Here we are broadcasting from Bluebird Planet and one of our favorite little bluebirds, Biffy Bluebird. What if someone wants a copy of these slides or professional development credit? Biffy Bluebird, we never get tired of having you as our special guest. And you brought your friend Bobby Bluebird, your big brother. Easy breezy. Details are at the end of the program. Biffy and Bobby, thank you so much. This is program 517 in an endless series designed to make teaching more fun. Here's the big picture, and it is quite a big picture. This is what we're up to in whole brain teaching. We have daily techniques. And notice the scoreboard is highlighted there on your left. We've talked about class, yes, the five classroom rules, teach OK last week. This week is a doozy, the scoreboard. Then we have a year-long classroom management system of which the scoreboard is level one. 
we will be featuring that year-long classroom management system in about four weeks, level by level. And then we talk about basic skills, reading, math, writing, state standards, critical thinking, leadership training. Why is it so big? I'll tell you why it's so big. Because we're all classroom teachers. And you know what? To teach elementary school especially, where you've got to teach all these different subjects. I mean, I'm just a college teacher. I just had to teach, you know, one or two or three, four subjects. But in elementary school, it's like, it's like you're a cook. But you've got to dish up everything in a massive smorgasbord. It's a feast of learning, lots of different dishes, and we address every single one. The only one we're still working on is spelling. Yeah, we need a spelling program, and we're still polishing up our state test preparation. But we're going after, as we say in California, the big enchilada. All about everything. That's our goal here at Old Brain Teaching. Modest goal. Let's look at our next screen, my friends. So each of these daily instruction techniques has a particular focus. We're looking tonight at the scoreboard. We call it the motivator. The motivator. That's the problem, my friends. How do we motivate kids to learn? They're sitting there, they're kind of enduring the experience. How do we get them on the edge of their seat? How do we get them working as hard as, as they can? It's all about the scoreboard. Yes. And here we go with the scoreboard. Here we go. So you set up a smiley and frowny T diagram on your whiteboard. Smiley points are for positive behavior, however you define positive behavior. Frowny points for negative behavior. Now, when you mark a frowny point, the students quickly lift their shoulders and give a mighty groan. I will demonstrate. So let's say here's my scoreboard. I mark it, I say hold it, and I turn around and I point it, and the kids go like this. <clears throat> I'll do that again if that was too fast. Uh, we don't want this. Uh, it takes too long. And the longer it takes, the more opportunity there is for off-task goofiness. We have no problem with on-task goofiness. In fact, we encourage task-focused laughter. But uh, too much. Uh, show them how to do it. Teach them it real fast right away. And the inventor of that Rapid Mighty Grown, Farrah Shipley, our dear whole brain teaching colleague in Lubbock, Texas. Farrah Shipley, Lubbock Lightning, she showed us on a video. Her kindergartner is going, oh, it's cool. Now, what about a smiley point? Well, we want the kids to quickly clap their hands and shout, oh, yeah. Like this. Watch me. You mark it. You say hold it. You point it up. Oh, yeah. Just like that. I even made the television blur. Watch. Oh, yeah. Practice it doing fast, crisp. Kids like to be fast and crisp. You should be taking like half a second to do each of those. Do you see already the power of the scoreboard? Whatever you want. Here, here's, here's what blows my mind. There's some people using things like one, two, three, eyes on me. One, two, eyes on you. Takes too long. I've heard of people, you're not going to believe this, I've heard of people flipping the light switch on and off. Come on now, my friends. It doesn't work. It gets old, and it's a little scary. Are people got these red, blue, green lights in front? Mighty groan. Mighty oh yeah. Let's get down to business. Now, what is the reward? 
Look at the screen, please. What's the reward? Christine, how often do you mark a tally? I'm going to tell you that in two seconds. The initial reward is for one minute more or less recess. Here's what I'm going to say. Listen to me, Budsley, Nancy Stoltenberg, and my other experts. I would say if you're just starting this out, don't use any reward. Just smileys and frownies. I guarantee you with kindergarten kids, if you don't use any rewards, they just dig the smileys and they don't like seeing the frownies. And I bet you anything with fifth graders, if you didn't say a reward at the start, they would just get into smileys and frownies. How often do you use, do you make a mark? I'm saying in the course of a day, you might have 20 smileys and 20 frownies for the first few weeks. And then as you keep doing the system, the kids get used to being on task. After a few months, you have problems finding things to mark a frowny for. You have to kind of invent it. Oh, some kids over here are only giving me 99%. Oh, that's not good enough. Mighty grown. Much better. Yeah. So this system works so well. It's quick. It's fun. But... Use a lot of smileys and frownies at the very, very start. Yeah, Christine, 20 and 20 each day. Think about it. You might say, well, that's an awful lot of marks, Coach B. How many times do you say, please pay attention? Nancy, stop that. Irving, turn around in your seat. You say that 200 times a day, if, if that many. So, say 10... Five and five before first recess, five and five before lunch. Yeah, it mounts up. But that's how many times you have to bring the kids back to you and get them sitting on the edge of their seats. Biffy Bluebird, why is the scoreboard important? Bobby Bluebird, tell your little brother. The scoreboard is the prime motivator for students to work hard. Mighty oh yeahs and groans are continuously entertaining. And the game is always close. Yes, keep that game close because you're in charge of the score. Oh, my friends, let, let's just pay attention here. If you were a television programmer, and you were in charge of baseball games or football games or whatever, and you could manipulate the score for maximum audience interest, wouldn't you keep it close? One team is ahead. The other team catches up. The other team goes back ahead. The other team passes them. Keep the game close. You're the scorekeeper. You follow what I'm saying? You can make it as exciting as you want. Make it breathless. And then calm down, calm down, calm down. No points, no points, no points. Oh, my goodness. We've got some kids here in the front row who are really working hard. Mighty, oh, yeah. Not quite loud enough. Mighty groan. Not fast enough. Mighty groan. Excellent. Give me a mighty, oh, yeah. How long did that take? 15 seconds, and the kids are right there back with you. It's called ping-ponging. Pay attention to that later in the show. Now, here's the next slide. Scoreboard variations. A few minutes of any game or video, listening to music, story time, or one page more or less of homework, one point more or less of extra credit or joke time. The key thing on the rewards is, one, they are not physical. No candy, no play money, no lottery tickets, none of that junk. And keep it small. I'm taking off my glasses, my friends. You know what that means. Big point. The smaller the reward, the more precious it is. If you're giving away 15 minutes of video time, one minute of video time isn't worth zip. But if you're giving away one minute of video time, and then after six weeks, you give away two minutes of video time, oh my goodness, we get two minutes of video time. Small reward, smaller, the more precious. And as we say, 
at our conferences, it's a long year. Plan in a, August and September for a reward that you can double, triple, and quadruple by May. One of the big mistakes we make. We give away too much. Because we want to be nice. And we want kids to love us. Well, you know, you give away a pizza party on Friday, and that's in September. In May, what are you going to do? Take them out to Subway? You know what I'm saying? Keep it small, my friends. Keep it small. Now, we need variety. Need variety. Use other categories instead of smiley frowny. Do pirate, captain, and crew, or queen of the universe and earthlings. Or mark one side extra credit and the other side dexter credit. Or mark one side cool and the other side uncool. People ask me what's extra credit, dexter credit. My college kids just ate this up all semester. It's all I needed with extra credit, dexter credit. I say, listen, if everyone's working hard, we all get one point extra credit. Or maybe two or three if you end up way ahead. But if we're not all working hard, we get one point dexter credit. That means I'm subtracting points from your extra credit pile. It just worked amazing. Don't give away extra credit. You know what I'm saying? Extra credit is gold to kids. One point, two points. Smaller the reward, the more precious. I think I've said that before. Now, the plus minus three rule. You explain that the score rarely exceeds three points either way. When you're up by three, the teacher is looking for the smallest negative behavior. When you're down by three, the smallest positive behavior. The game is always close. Tell them that up front. You know, it's usually going to just be within three. So if you're doing really, really good, I'm looking for the smallest little bit of negative behavior. I won't point you out. We never point out individuals for frownies because that just turns the whole class against that poor kid. And you know what? When you're down by three, I'm just looking for anybody here to do something on task. Aaron, excellent job. Your hands are folded. Your eyes are focused on me. Here's a smiley for everyone from dear Aaron. Keep the game close. I once went into a classroom early in my whole brain teaching career 10 years ago and the teacher had like 15 frownies and three smileys and she said well pretty soon they'll get the idea no my friend if you've got 15 frownies and three smileys they don't have the idea at all keep it close if your kids are so squirrely you can pick out one or two kids anyway to bring back the smiley points. You know what? Lab dog, don't point out individual kids. Let that behavior go. Get a couple other behaviors and say, I've got some kids in here who are talking to their neighbors, mighty grown, and boom, get right on with it. If you stop, you've look oh I, I'm I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If you stop to scold that kid, you know what the problem is? One, scolding doesn't work. If scolding worked, I'd teach you how to scold. Now listen to me, you. You better be looking at me. See, I teach you the art of scolding. Scolding doesn't work. But number two, the problem with scolding is you lost instruction time. Yeah. And instruction time, it's not gold. It's platinum in our business, my friends. Yeah, don't stop. Keep it rolling. Glasses are going back on. That's right, Square Root Teach. All right. I just feel like we've got an incredible audience here tonight. Let's look at the whole brain teaching pattern. Red is the teacher, blue is the student. And Biffy Bluebird says, sample scoreboard patterns. The teacher notes positive actions. Marks a smiley and says, hold it. 
whirls, points at the class. The class clap their hands and say, oh, yeah. I don't know why it is. The kids want to say woo and some other stuff. It's more fun when they do this. Oh, yeah. It's the clap and the oh, yeah simultaneously. Oh, yeah. Now, you could come up with some other celebrations, but stick with that until you need a new celebration. Don't change it up until you really have to. If you wait a long time to change it up, when you do change it up, it has more effect. So don't like use one version of the scoreboard for three days and then change it. Will not have much effect. Now here is the frowny pattern. Here's the frowny pattern. The teacher notes negative action, marks a frowny and says, hold it. Whirls, points at the class, and they lift their shoulders. They give the mighty groan. I've demonstrated that. It's so much fun. I'm going to do it again. Oh, yeah. Oh, and here's a teacher from Korea online. And Anna teacher, they like saying, oh, yeah, in Korea. We've had some incredible teachers from Korea. We had a great one that we lost track of called Teacher Andy. Teacher Andy, you out there? Come on back and join us here at Whole Brain Teaching. All right. Now, this is big. I'm not even going to show you this. I'm not showing you this. I'm taking off my glasses before I show it to you. Now, focus, focus. I'm going 3D on you. Watch me now. Don't get scared there. This is the 3D effect. Ping pong. That's the magic word, ping pong. I'm going to show you how to ping pong them. Do I have your attention? That 3D is spooky, isn't it? Now let's look at the slide. The mighty ping pong strategy. A real waker-upper, says Biffy Bluebird. Super in the afternoon, says Bobby Bluebird. Note positive behavior. Give a smiley. Immediately note negative behavior. Give a frowny. Score remains the same, but the students' emotions have been ping-ponged from elation to alarm. Later, do a reverse ping-pong. Start your lessons by ping-ponging. I'll say that three times. Start your lessons by ping-ponging. Start your lessons by ping-ponging. Start your lessons by ping-ponging. You're ready to talk about verbs. Go over to the blackboard and say, class, no matter how they respond, you say, that was too slow, mighty groan. Uh, oh, not fast enough, mighty groan. Uh, much better, mighty oh yeah, oh yeah, little louder, mighty oh yeah. That was a double ping pong. I think usually you need two or three ping pongs. It took you 15 to 20 seconds, and you've got them focused on you. You know what? It's like a speaker who starts by telling a joke. You use the joke to get the class involved. You start with the mighty groan and the mighty oh yeah. You're reaching their limbic systems. That's where the emotions are rooted. You got the limbic system. You got the rest of the brain. Think about that. A little salt it with fun. A little salt, little fun salt. Or we call it, you ready for this? This is what we call it. Listen to me. This is what we call it. Funtricity. Turn on the funtricity switch in their brain. Nancy Stoltenberg and Buzzley, I'll bet you never heard Coach B talk about funtricity. I've been thinking about talking about that. I might even try to patent it. You like that, funtricity? Switch the funtricity switch in their brain. All right, now, ping pong, remember that. Jesse, you like that funtricity. I like it too. Why should you use the scoreboard? I'm sorry, that's Biffy Bluebird. Actually, that's Bobby Bluebird. Why should you use the scoreboard? One, St. Jason, do you leave the mind tally points up or do they get erased? Here's my view on leaving them or getting erased. 
I say divide your scoreboard into three or four sectors. And, you know, the first sector is before recess. Leave that tally up. And then say, well, this is what we did before recess. Let's see if we can beat our score. Just walk it on down. You know what? We did so good. We're not doing so good here. Come on, pick it up. Let them compete against themselves. Or if you've got several classes, leave up period one score and motivate period two. You know what I'm saying? Kids love that. They never get tired of that. Let's go back to the screen. Now, if you would like to watch this program another time, they are available at wholebrainteaching.com, middle of the page. We have a library there of all of our shows. So why should you use the scoreboard? It replaces candy, marbles in a jar, cheesy prizes, play money, lottery tickets, etc. It's simple and it's cheap. Yes. It gives you variety. Change the categories. Change the smiley frowny. Change the rewards. Stick with a category or reward as long as you can, then change it. And it's exciting. Plus minus three rule ensures the game is always close. And it's flexible. Use the ping pong. Use a timer. I'm going to talk about timers. In teaching college, they should give you the only technology you need is a stopwatch. Oh, the wonders of a stopwatch. My friends, we're going to play the scoreboard today, and we're going to see how long can we go before someone forgets accidentally and doesn't raise their hand for permission to speak. Boom, there goes that stopwatch. All right, that's okay, John, you forgot. Our record is 15 seconds. You write the record 15 seconds on the board. Now, folks, if we can beat that 15-second record, we might just get a smiley. Don't guarantee a smiley. Don't guarantee a frowny. Get that stopwatch going and keep a loose relationship to the scoreboard. Use a timer. Or here's another suggestion. Focus on one rule. Raise your hand for permission to speak or follow directions quickly. Listen, follow directions quickly is a great one. Put it next to the scoreboard. You know, folks, we'll be having smileys and frownies for many things today, but follow directions quickly. That's what I'm looking for. Kids like an up-tempo. You slow the tempo down and boom, you're going to slow them down just like that. So focus on one rule, one activity. Make smart choices is another good single rule to focus on. They love boys versus girls. Or you know what, my friends? If you can get to plus three, we're going to play one minute of mind soccer, I guarantee it. Change it up, but not too quickly and not too slowly. That's the Goldilocks principle. Just thought of calling it the Goldilocks principle. If you change it too fast, the change has no effect. If you wait too long, you waited too long. That's my philosophy. When you wait too long, then... You had some dead time there. The more you teach, the sharper your intuition is going to be about when you should introduce a little variety. Now, here's how these work. Girls versus boys. If you do girls versus boys, do some sort of reward that isn't going to drive them crazy, like whoever wins gets to line up first for recess. That's a good one. Whoever wins gets to choose the art activity uh, right before lunch. Girls versus boys, keep it close. Now look at this, look at this one down here in the lower left. Notice all those smileys and frownies? There's two frownies in one part, one frown in the other, two smileys, one smiley. What's that about? It means when I mark in the double frowny, that is a double frowny. When I mark in a double smiley, that's a double smiley. We call it double day. The score turns out the same, but man, 
All those smileys and frownies up there, ooh, it really gets their attention. All right, let's talk about three different things we're focusing on. Speed, smiley frowny, focus, I really feel like everyone's looking at me, and doing the full turn. This is the full turn, my friends. This is the full turn. Oh, I've got everybody doing the full turn. It's like that. So change up the scoreboard that way. Or leader's rule. Leader's rule. Pay attention. If you got a really tough class, get the kids to vote on some leaders. And then when you see the leaders doing something good, mark a smiley under leader's rule. And then when the leaders get about 10 points, it's time for an instant game. What about this leader's rule? I just got smileys, no frownies. Here's the thing. You are rewarding your classroom leaders selected by the students for their good behavior. Do you see the power of that? If you've got the leaders trying to gain the esteem of their followers by guiding them to a game and the leaders are working hard to keep you happy, you know what we call that? Teaching heaven. Don't switch these up too much. There's a bunch more versions of the scoreboard, which I'll show you online. But keep them in your big back pocket. How about when you're sitting with a small group and the rest of the class is at workstations? Christine, four, we've got you covered there. You're sitting in a small group. You keep a little whiteboard with you, and you mark it there as you need to. Just as you say, oh, you kids over there in the corner, would you please stop that, blah, 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 blah. Don't blah, 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 blah. Just say, got some kids off tax, mighty grown. Not loud enough, mighty grown. Much better, give me a mighty oh, yeah. And boom, you're back to small group work. In fact, in fact, my friends, all right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I shouldn't really do this. I should have told you, please sit down. Nancy Stoltenberg and Budsley, I hope you're sitting down. You're right, Square Root Teach. The glasses are coming off. i got to take a drink before I tell you this. It's pretty exciting. In Florida this weekend, I met, as I often do, a genius teacher. This is what she did. I need a photograph. Just pay attention. She has a lanyard. Okay, we know what lanyards are. She had a clear plastic envelope that you use to put name tags in. Lanyard, clear plastic envelope. Inside the clear plastic envelope, a little scoreboard, smiley and frowny. You with me? There it is around her neck. Check this out. 3D. Check this out. She got a little spot of Velcro. You can buy little ovals of Velcro. She stuck it on the bottom of the clear plastic envelope and then took another spot of Velcro and stuck it on a marker. Boom! Marker stuck to the clear plastic envelope and boom, frowny. And boom, smiley. She probably didn't even have to look down. Wherever she went, she had the little scoreboard right there. Tell me about that one, my friends. Tell me about that, Christine Four. Yes, it's almost as good as an iPhone app, which we're working on, iPhone scoreboard app. But until then, can you dig that, Nancy Budsley, the lanyard? Yes. Super cool, Genmo. I know. I was just astonished. Bam. Yes, Leb Dog. Yes, we will get an iPhone app. In about 10 minutes, I'll have it done. Then you transfer it. Yes, then you transfer the score to the big, to the big uh, scoreboard whenever you want to. All right, check this out. Here's a couple more variations. Now, you could even do this. Notice I've X'd out the frownies. Notice I've X'd out the frownies. Let's work on our manners. When I hear, see kids listening to others, when I see them sharing, when I see good manners on the playground, I'm working, um, 
I'm marking smileys. And when we get to 30 smileys, we'll play mind soccer for a minute. You with me? Change it up. Just be sure you've given yourself enough slack so that you're getting the behavior you want and you don't have to take too much time. But it doesn't matter if you're taking time for mind soccer because mind soccer is academic review. Yes, CR warmth. You might have fried, you know what? Can I tell you something, my friends? Of course I can. I'm the one doing all the talking here. I am big on manners. If I ever get to run a school, which I won't, it's going to be manners. Treat the custodian with manners. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. Treat the office staff with manners. Hello, uh, Mrs. McDonald. This is a note from my teacher, Ms. Stoltenberg. Good manners, open doors, say please, say thank you. Manners, manners is the oil that makes this engine of education run smoothly. And we don't have good manners. So try that manners board. Maybe every Friday you're going to do a manners board. Can you guys, Mr. Emily Post, square root teach? Yes, I am, Mr. Emily Post. I'd be happy to be Mr. Emily Post. Yes, Fonda Jones. Manners board. Now, Mystery Road. Mystery Road. Ho, 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 ho. This is the scoreboardless scoreboard. Give me an ah. So we start down here at the start, and we're going to draw a line. We come to a turn, and something mysterious will happen. Figure out something for the first turn, and then draw a line. And... You know, you can get off the road or on the road. Watch me. So you're drawing the line. We're on the road. Oh, no, we got off the road. Mighty groan. Oh, we're further off the road. Mighty groan. Oh, we're back on the road. Mighty, oh, yeah. Oh, we're approaching the mystery spot. Tell your neighbors, what's going to be the mystery? You know what I'm saying? Mystery road. They dig it. And when you get to certain places, you can either go forwards or backwards. And then... Oh, we get up there to that exclamation. That is the big, there's the crossroads. We either got to go back or we win the star prize. Can you dig? Can you dig Mystery Road? So lots of variations on the scoreboard. No excuse for kids being uninvolved because we can change it up. Try changing it up with lottery tickets, will you? Here is JJ Jive. He's got worry on his forehead. But doesn't it get confusing if you keep switching, man? If you switch, switch, switch all the time, doesn't it? I'm worried about that, Coach B. Well, JJ Jive, I do appreciate your worries. I'm glad that you brought that up, but here is, here's the deal. Use levels. Levels turns the scoreboard into a video game. So you go in and you say we're at level one and you play at level one for a long time and now we're at level two, it's boys versus girls. Or we're at level two, now it's double day. Or we're at level two, now it's mystery road or it's leader's rule. Use the notion of levels. Kids love levels. They feel like they're getting somewhere. All right. That's a big point. Let me make another big point here. Did I show you the levels screen? There it is. Now, here's the Qatari sea slug. And the word is habituation. Habituation. Watch me now, my friends. Here I have, for your viewing pleasure, a probe and a sea slug. Now, scientists study the sea slug because its nervous system is so simple you can really tell what's happening in the nervous system. If you take that sea slug and turn it over, it has some flukes, some little fins on the underneath side. You 
Touch it with a probe and boom, they close. Touch it with a probe, boom, they close. About the tenth time you probe it, the flukes don't close anymore. It becomes habituated to the stimulus. This is huge. I'm putting down my probe. I'm putting down my sea slug. I'm taking off my glasses. I'm brushing off my tails, putting on my top hat. You know that? Habituation is the enemy of education. You've got something. It worked great in September. In November, it's dead wood. You couldn't get their attention if you threw it at them, if they had to duck. You know what I'm saying? They become habituated. That's why all, that, that's why all the way through whole brain teaching. Variety, variety, variety. But you, it's an art. Too much variety, they become habituated to variety. Let's talk about art and craft. Art and craft. New topic. Never done it before on a webinar. Listen to me. Craft over here, art over here. If you follow the rules of a craft, let's say woodworking, a craft I like, follow these rules, cut the wood this way, do the joints, get the doweling going, follow the rules of how to make a box, you'll end up with a box. Just follow the wood craft rules. Only thing is, your box will be like everybody else's box, but you'll have a box by following the rules. A craft, you follow the rules. An art, not so. There's no clear-cut rules. There's some principles, and you tweak, and you change, and you get creative, and you have a lot more failures with an art than with a craft. A craft, all you got to do is just read the directions. An art, there's no directions for how to make a great painting or a magnificent box. But in the art, the great thing is, if you finish, your box will be unlike anyone else. It will be a part of you. Art, craft. What we're doing is we're showing you the craft, and we want you to change it into your personal art. Tell that to your colleagues. Craft and art. You like the point there? The point here is about habituation. We're giving you the general principles of avoiding habituation. Turn avoiding habituation into your personal art. Your class then becomes your masterpiece. Yes, it will. Classes are going back on. Now, the thing about levels is so powerful that I am going to take you to Teaching Heaven. I'm going to take you to Teaching Heaven right now. I'm going to show you a picture of Teaching Heaven. Can I get a little enthusiasm out there? I know you're enthusiastic, but we're, this is not just any ordinary show tonight. Showing you Teaching Heaven. What is Teaching Heaven going to look like? I'm going to show you the main entryway to Teaching Heaven. Elementary matters. Oh, yeah. See a warmth. You're ready. You guys are so involved tonight. Here's the... I'm dialing up the picture. Here is the entryway to teaching heaven. I was lucky enough to get a quick snapshot. There it is. The entryway to teaching heaven, my friend, is levels. Use those levels on the scoreboard and use them artistically and you will avoid habituation and if you avoid habituation you're in teaching heaven go right on through that levels gateway to the wonderful land the paradise of education all right how do you start the scoreboard real fast make the diagram Explain rewards and penalties. Practice the mighty oh yes and the mighty groans. And go. You with me? How easy is that? You don't have to go online to Oriental Trading Company. Yes, I know you've been. There's a 3D for you. I know you've been lurking around Oriental Trading Company. 
and you've been buying the pencils, the freaky pencils with the hair growing out of the eraser, give it up. You don't need all those cheesy trinkets. Diagram on the board, boom, boom, and here we go. That's the quick start. Now here's the summary. Yes, don't do, Christine, give up, fill the bucket, you know, with the gem and all the rest of that. Let's just talk here. You got a bucket and they're putting gems in it and the gems get all over the floor and then somebody's got to count the gems and you got to buy the gems. Just use the manor scoreboard or use a, take this craft of the scoreboard, turn it into your artwork and then share it with your friends online on the forum at Whole Brain Teaching. Now, here's the summary. Mark for positive and negative class behavior. Mark only individual positive behavior, not individual negative behavior. The class exclaims, oh yeah, or groans. And you're right, reading lady, scoreboard is magic for substitutes. Yes! Prize box is gone, Nancy Stoltenberg. The groan is crucial that draws the class back in after a penalty. I, I haven't emphasized this probably in about a year. It's a big point. Get the groan right. Be sure they have fun because when you give a penalty, it's kind of off-putting. But when they do the mighty groan, it's a fun penalty, the golden thread of fun. Emphasize that groan. Quick, sharp, yes, yes. Oh, excellent. That way a penalty is not alienating your class. 10 to 20 total marks per day, I'd say even more than that. Switch rewards and categories as necessary as your artistic sense dictates. And keep the rewards small so they can be increased later in the year. Here are the scoreboard levels. Level 1 is the scoreboard. Level 2, you add practice cards. Level 3, add the guff counter for back talk. Level 4, add independence for rebel clicks. Level 5, add the bullseye game. Level 6, add the agreement bridge. We will cover all these levels of the scoreboard in a few weeks. So stay tuned. The levels of the scoreboard is Teaching Challenging Kids 102. Don't get ahead of yourselves. We're still in Teaching Challenging Kids 101. Industrial Strength Scoreboard. Hold it. You know what's going to happen. Industrial Strength Scoreboard. Glasses coming off. We piloted this Industrial Strength Scoreboard. A teacher and I, Jackie Pedersen was a second grade teacher, got hired at a middle school. Guess which kids they gave her? This middle school in Riverside, California had a suspension rate of 45 percent and Jackie Pedersen had the toughest kids at that school. Oh, she needed something. Yes. We worked out Industrial Strength Scoreboard. I know I've got your attention now. This goes in your back pocket. Remember it's there. Toughest of the tough kids. This is magic. Let's look at it. Now, you mark teacher versus students. And you say, what you want is to talk all period. You're the teacher. You love to talk. What students want is to finish early. When students are off task, they're scoring points for your side, giving you the opportunity to lecture longer. Oh boy, do you love to lecture. So you congratulate negative behavior. The last thing students want is to be on the teacher's side. Check this out. Juan, thank you so much for interrupting me. That gives me an opportunity to talk even longer. Everybody, mighty groan. Juan, keep it up, will you please, because I just love to talk. The last thing your rebel kids want to do is to be on the teacher's side, so you pretend like, you know what? 
I'm glad to have the opportunity to go over this again. I want to talk all period. Now, some of you might want to finish early so you can get started on the homework or, you know, maybe today, I don't know, we might even have time to sit next to our friend and chat a little bit for 30 or 45 seconds. But you know what? You're off task. Another one for me, mighty grown. Do you see the psychology of that? The only way they can rebel against you and not be on your team is to engage in positive behavior. Duh! <laughs> you see that? I'm not going to be on your team, teacher. We, we had some middle school teachers who would go up to a, a rowdy kid to start up here and say, um, Maria, I, I really need you to kind of be disruptive today because I have to cover lots of material. And, you know, I, I just need, Maria says, oh, no way. No, you're not going to pull that trick on me. You see that? Rebelling against the teacher meant, meant they had to go along with the system. Oh, yeah. You could give me an oh, yeah for that one. Now, here's Mr. Worry. Here's Mr. Worry. JJ Jive. But what about leadership training? Is it leadership training very important? It is JJ Jive. Leadership training, advanced. Select two to four leaders to be energy captains. Half the leaders will lead energetic shouts of, oh, yeah. Half the leaders will lead energetic groans. Good job. Follow you. Juanita's leadership. Point at Juanita. Your rowdy kids will love being energy captain. Transform the rowdies. That's our motto. Think about that. Leadership training. Yes, there is a reward every day, Christine, unless they don't get the reward. The reward might be one minute extra recess. And you know what? Let's focus on Coach B for a second. Oh, Guys, I'm sorry. We were playing for a minute extra recess, but the frownies won. We'll just go outside and I'll take my stopwatch and you'll watch the other kids play for a minute. Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, here is one of our favorite colleagues, Ms. Linenthal. Gosh, the scoreboard sounds great. But how could I get professional development credit for this broadcast and a copy of these slides? Miss Linenthal, do you have a cold? Actually, no, Coach B. My, my cold is getting better. I used to sound kind of hoarse. Well, Miss Linenthal, I really do love your question. Here, my friends, is how you can get a copy of these slides and professional development credit for the incredible bargain price, $5.17. Go to WholeBrainTeaching.com, click on the PayPal button, and donate $5.17. 517 is a code number for this program. Before long, within minutes sometime, I will send you an email with a professional development certificate and a PDF copy of these slides. Let's look at where you go. Check it out. I'm going to bring us right up to, there is the PayPal. Type in $5.17. I get the email, and I send you a PDF copy of the slides with the professional development certificate. Let's look at that professional development certificate, my friends. No ordinary professional development certificate. It's got the fancy blue border. And it has a backside. No, you can go ahead right now, James, and do that. Nancy, you're right. Excellent point. If you folks listen, you've got one kid who's being disruptive. Get everybody else on board. Get everybody else going along with the program. And then take that kid aside and talk to him. And after a week or two, you can just say, you know what, John, I'm not angry at you. You just need a little bit more practice. Come sit out here on the bench at recess and for one minute, just practice. Rule number two, raise your hand for permission to speak. Give those, 
give those kids who are having difficulty with one minute recess practice, that gets them ready for level two where we really will address individual behavior. But first of all, the scoreboard is for the whole class. Know that you've got a whole bunch of other stuff in your back pocket to address individual behavior. One of the best things you can do for that individual is have everybody organized and going along. It's, I, I'm excited. It's very hard to be out of step when everybody is in step. You follow what I'm saying? Get the class moving along like a well-oiled machine. Well-oiled with the oil of manners. <laughs> kind of a gross metaphor. And then there's going to be some leverage there, some peer pressure. And if there isn't, we've got a lot of things that we can do for the individual kid. But initially, focus on the masses. All right, my friends. I've got a special surprise for you tonight special surprise. Before I get to it, let's just look at the big picture here. There is our education reform pyramid. Let's just, let's do some animation here. At the base of the pyramid is freebies. Are freebies? Is or are freebies? Internet videos, conferences, and whole brain teaching, that's how we lay the foundation for education reform. Then we do the big seven, and tonight we talked about the scoreboard. Next week is hands and eyes. On top of that, we start our year-long classroom management system. The beginning of that is the scoreboard. Then we add practice cards for individual behavior. Then the guff counter for back talk. Then independence for rebel clicks. Then the bullseye and or the agreement bridge for the most challenging of all kids. Those are the kids who are immune to penalty. Yes, we have something for kids who are immune to penalty and immune to peer pressure. That lays the basis for our basic skills, primary of which is our reading material. Leadership training from top to bottom. And that takes us to Learning Heaven, a whole brain developing, self-managing class. That's how we define Learning Heaven. Now, I know you want me to come and teach your class. Get an administrator to send me an email. Our schedule is filling up, as you will see in a few seconds how full it's getting. Chris Biffle at WholeBrainTeaching.com. If you'd like a review of this, broadcast tonight, look at the first steps menu. I'll show you where to get a review. Look at the first steps menu. I'm going to go up here. See first steps? There's the K4 scoreboard and the 5th 12th scoreboard. Read those little articles. And then go on and read the free ebook Whole Brain Teaching for Challenging Kids. So go to that first step menu. Now, here's the little surprise for you, my friends. The little surprise is, is that we actually have put together some upcoming appearances. Where are we going to be and when are we going to be there? Well, this is approximate. But first of all, you want to see our 30 videos, go to my YouTube channel, www.youtube.com backslash user backslash Chris Biffle. And if I'm going too fast for you, just get a copy of these slides. You want to follow me on Twitter? That way you'll get the up-to-date information about whole brain teaching. Or go to Facebook, whole brain teaching. That's where we're talking about that's where we're talking about iPhone, iPad, scoreboard apps. Here's some conference dates. March 10th, Palmdale, California. We've got one coming up March 3rd in Palmdale as well. March 17th, Indio. March 24th, Bakersfield. March 27th, Maryland. 
April 21st, Madisonville. April 30th, Wichita. June 4th, Sacramento. June 19th, York, Pennsylvania. June 25th, Jackson, Missouri. And our big Midwest Conference, multiple presenters, breakout sessions, Walsh University in Ohio. Look for these coming up on our calendar. My friends, give me a few questions. Great program tonight. What's coming next week, I'll tell you. Hands and eyes. First time you use hands and eyes, you will be sold on whole brain teaching forever. Yes, my friends, forever. This is what we use when we have a big point to make. And you know what? We make a big point about once every five minutes. So don't miss the broadcast next week, Hands and Eyes. My friends, I love these Tuesday night shows. Tell your colleagues that all they have to do to see a show is show up 24-7 at the website. You can review all of our videos right here in the middle of the website in this video library. It's right here. Please note you got to scroll over to get to the earlier ones. My friends, here's the video library right there. And so I say to you, What I love to say every week, power to the teachers. God bless us all. We'll see you next Tuesday night. Goodbye, my friends.